Welcome back, music fans. It is Dave, uh, the Real Music Observer, observing real music in real time for real people like you and me. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the band Chicago and how I believe the current Chicago lineup is probably the strongest group of players that the band has ever had. Now, if you're a Chicago purist again and you're going back to 1967, you want to the original band uh, in their youth, in their prime youth, you're not getting that. Uh, what you're getting today is some amazing people that are doing terrific work. Uh, and people, by the way, who seem to like being in Chicago. That's kind of a big thing. Their drummer, Triz, Triz Imboden, probably the coolest guy on the planet. I believe Triz is a cancer survivor. He is one tough cookie, and he is one consistent drummer back there since 1990. Uh, Triz got his debut on the 21 album, uh, an album that should have done so much better than it did, but that's probably the subject of an entire video, and I won't go into that. But I do want to talk about some of the other guys. Lou Pardini, uh, who came in to replace the very sour pussed scat brain scatter Bill Champlin. You know, I hear a lot of people on YouTube saying, oh, I really miss Bill Champlin. Well, guess what? Bill Champlin doesn't miss you, okay? He doesn't miss you. Just letting you know that. Uh, you can watch the guy in a few videos. Never wrote a song with Robert Lamb. Robert Lamb called him out on that one time. And it's just one of those things where Champlin was brought in by Foster and quote unquote that supposedly saved the band uh, we don't know that for sure maybe chicago wouldn't have had the giant 80s success that they had if it weren't for foster i will say that but reading like the bio of robert lamb how he talks about going into a deep depression during the early 1980s and i can probably make a little guesstimate as to why Robert Lamb was so depressed. <laughs> he was pushed out. Pushed out completely. Uh, there's a version of Lamb trying to sing, I believe, You're the Inspiration. Cause, and I think it's on the Chicago documentary. Uh, it's one of those ballads that Cetera knocked out of the park. And again, I'm not demeaning Cetera's ability to sing a ballad, but Foster who didn't seem to want to turn like the tubes into a ballad band, teamed up with Cetera and, you know, made it Barry Manilow on ice. You know, it's just, okay, I, I get it. You know, If You Leave Me Now was a big hit, and you can kind of see where they were going here. But I'm way off track. I want to talk about today's current lineup and how amazingly good they are. Uh, they've got a guy who's filling in for Walt Perizader, who, from what I understand, doesn't tour because of a heart condition that he has. And, you know, okay, all right, I can kind of deal with that. Um, Ray Herman is the guy's name, and he's doing a, he's, he's very good. He's, he's a very good player. Uh, of course, you got Lee still there. You got Jimmy still there. Robert's still there. And my man, Jeff Coffey who came out of freaking nowhere last year. And this is how this channel kind of got started because I made some commentary about how I thought Jeff was better than Jason. And Jason took this extended leave of absence. I don't want to rehash the whole thing. Had a death in the family, but it went on for months. And then finally, uh, he decided to call it quits. I don't know if that's the entire truth. Maybe we need another documentary to figure that out. All I know is Jeff Coffey was smoother. He wasn't straining. His voice was a little more generic, so it wasn't as raspy on some of those struggly notes where Jason Chef um, sounded like he was trying to jump outside his body in order to hit the note. Uh, Jeff doesn't seem to have that problem. And last night they played in Houston, for instance, 
the paper, of all the people that they can mention, the paper singled out Jeff Coffey as sounding amazing and was like one of the great surprises of the night. Uh, and plus he had the Doobie Brothers there and they were still talking about Jeff Coffey. So then you got Keith Howland, who I think Keith Howland is as close to Terry Kath as any guitar player that's played with Chicago. And Keith is a little more contemporary. He's not quite as psychedelic. He's a little more jazz fusion than psychedelic. But man, oh man, that guy, when he, he plays, you feel it. And I love Keith Howland. So that rounds out a very impressive lineup. Of course, you got Lou Pardini uh, playing keyboards and not being Bill Champlin. So again, Bill, I know a lot of people miss Bill. I can tell you Bill doesn't miss you. Okay, I'm just letting you know that. Champlin uh, was a very, shall we say, cranky man, especially toward the end of his tenure with Chicago. And he said some things on YouTube, I think, that are absolutely deplorable. And that's about, you know, that's about all I want to say. I do like, I love the Bill-Jason era. Bill and Jason had a thing going on. You could say Bill and Peter had a nice mix, and that was the claim Champlin made later, throwing Jason under the bus. Well, Peter's gone. Uh, me and, me and uh, Peter had this great mix, meaning to say that you and Jason didn't have a good mix. And... Kudos to Bill on Chicago 19 for rescuing the band from more of David Foster. Despite what David Foster did to the band in the 80s, and people, some people love the 80s. I do. I love the Chicago of the 80s. I mean, if you like solo Peter Cetera music, you're going to love Chicago from at least the first part of the 80s. I liked it when Jason took over because the band actually started to rock a little bit like 19 and 21. I love those albums. 21 again, you really need to go get that album if you don't have it. Uh, it is one of Chicago's better albums. And let me just say this too. The lineup they have now is actually kind of swung back. Their last album, the Now album, sort of swung the band back into their creative heyday during the 70s. Didn't sound like a 70s album, but it sounded a little earth, wind, and fire-ish at times. It had a real funky groove, but it also had some real crunchy guitars, some really great percussion. I mean, this is a band that I believe is hitting on all cylinders and a, and a fantastic lineup that you really have to go see live to appreciate. Every video I've seen on YouTube is a masterpiece. These guys nail it every night. They're consummate professionals. One of the cool things to see is Lee Lofnane, they allow Lee to sing Color My World, which I think is really cool. And I didn't know Lee could sing. And he actually sings fairly well. So all of this to say, Chicago is back. They're bad and they're nationwide and they're coming to a city near you. And as a Chicago fan, kudos to the band for hiring Jeff Coffey, Lou Pardini, and Keith Howland, and Triz and Bowden. They're all amazing additions to this band. Uh, and you just got to love even Ray Herman out there cranking out the saxophone. Yes, I know. If you're an originalist, if you're a purist, you're just, your head's exploding. But look, people age, people die, unfortunately. And some people, you shouldn't miss at all because they don't miss you. Like Bill Champlin, he doesn't miss you. <laughs> That's all I got to say about Bill. Uh, maybe Bill will comment on one of my videos. Maybe he'll come. The funny thing about Bill is he says he doesn't want to play Chicago music anymore. And then he goes out with Danny Serafin and he plays a bunch of Chicago music. So you go figure that one out, all right? I'm Dave, and this is the Real Music Observer. And we will observe real music again real soon. Talk to you then.